Hey everyone, and welcome to the second ever Clash Bash. I am Man Sant, and I actually initially created Clash as a way to introduce my friends here in Geneva, New York, to the format, who were uh, pretty fresh to the game, interested from coming over from some other card games, and I wanted to sell them on an entry-level format that still had really juicy thematics with this young hero gameplay that lets you discover more and more power as you led towards the adult format in Classic Constructed. So I'm really, really excited to see that Clash has taken off here. Now it's being run by Nathaniel from Bold Brew Games, who's doing a fantastic effort in keeping up with this uh, rules committee and a website that has actually allowed Clash uh, to spread more global than it ever did when I was at the Rands. I've heard of a lot of communities, especially in South America, playing Clash and loving it. And we have another Clash bash as well that a lot of people have been enjoying. Shout out to all the sponsors and the previous casters and producers who have been making this possible. But you get me in the booth today, Mansant, and we're going to go over Alex versus Rotu in this best of three. I've not peeped these games. I don't even know what decks they're playing uh, because we're just kind of going to jump in and, and let that all unfold naturally in front of us. So with that, let's take a look at game one. So like I said, we have Alex versus Row 2, and uh, the way it works is if you win with one of these decks, you cannot play it again. So they've got a pretty interesting lineup for us here, uh, starting with Dromai on Alex's side versus Reinar on Row 2's side. Uh, this is, oh wow, very, very early Ash Generation coming from the Dromai side on this turn zero play, uh, but responded to with an Agile windup discard on Reiner's side as well. So this turn zero is looking quite favorable already for both players. I just want to note, one of the ways that so much Ash was generated on the Dromai side was with Glory Seeker, and that's what I love about Fab uh, kind of watered down into this Clash format is that you're going to see heroes with really unique strengths, right? That was a rare dragon, you, something you cannot play in commoner, that was uh, played off the back of a lot of Ash Generation off of a headpiece that is still just a common. So you see some interplay between commons and rares. Uh, it's really just a strong start off the both of them here. Reinar using that agility token to now come in too wide, leaking some damage, clearing that dragon with the pack hunt directed right at the... Uh, Yendera here, and this is actually answering some questions for us. I was wondering if the Dromai was even going to run reds, or sorry, blues. You figure there is uh, kind of this big dragon playstyle that does run blues, whereas you can run red line that is strictly on reds. And in Blitz, I know that Dromai is uh, more of a red line heavy deck. People quite prefer uh, aggression in Blitz because you kind of have to, or uh, you just fall behind on the race because so many decks can produce damage so quickly. But in Clash, I don't think that's as true. You have to be ready for a bit more of a grind game. Uh, value comes to bear uh, quite a bit in this format from uh, when I was playing it back in the day. So we are going to see blues. We are going to see uh, potentially some of these uh, yeah, slower game plan strategies out of the, the Dromai here. Uh, still on the life back foot, though all the way down to 13, but you know, there's opportunity cost in all this because Ash has been generated, and Ash being generated means, uh, you know, there is some value in having to uh, uh, take life in instances just so you now spend your dragons, but you are spending your dragons without needing to generate Ash for them, so these zero drops become a lot easier to play, uh, which is what we see right now with Chromai and Asvali coming out. Uh, on a board state that is still plentiful with Ash on top of a passing Mirage now. So Dromai is developing quite the board state, but Reinar is a deck that can interact pretty well, right? A lot of Phantasm Poppers, uh, the potential for more action points off of the beaten trackers here or agilities to keep clearing the board state as well. And we see a lot of respect with a uh, attack coming through on the passing Mirage just to clean that up. Even with Dromai at 13, uh, Rotu is not taking the bait and swinging at face just yet, still on the board game plan. But it's going to give room for Dromai now to spend uh, another full hand generating red again, or gener pitching reds rather, to generate Ash, which is something we didn't uh, really expect out of a, uh, this matchup other than on turn zero. I thought turn zero was going to be where all the Ash comes from, and then we see it slowing down. But uh, no, there, there are windows, as we see right here, to uh, generate some more Ash. It's still ticking down, still ticking down. We're actually going to look at one ash left on the board here with the billing mirage uh, converting an ash wing uh, and uh, even an arsenal on the drum i said so reinar has this two card hand 
uh, well, one card plus the, the arsenal with an agility, but I really doubt that's going to get much mileage here. As the Romping Club goes face with no floating, there could be a heart and cross strap play or just the pass, as we see, just the pass. So Dromai cleaned that breakpoint right up with a fate for scene and now gets to respond again with some extra ash generation with a sweeping bullet. So good, so good when you have a window to play it like this and you actually generate all this ash. Uh, it just once again rewards all the zero cost dragons that are still to be played. Another Chromai and another Azulai at least. So we saw a clash actually won by Dromai as well, which is really funny. Really funny to see. Ash Wings coming through, finally landing some significant damage. Life totals almost at parity as we now see Reinar try to mount a comeback. There is the option to break the beaten trackers and he goes for it. Savage Feast is so good with extra action points. I'm interested to see if this is just a club, which is good value, right? You can come in for five because you've discarded a card now. Or if we see some other play just because uh, you're a bit card inefficient if all you do is swing into club here. But Dromai, whenever you attack her face, gets a lot of mileage out of defense reactions, which she's going to run anyway because they're red. Uh, and uh, sure enough, oh my goodness, we see... Wait, is this just game? This I think this is just game right here. That is a pretty wild play to shore it up. Uh, so, sure, hey, Reinar wins. Congrats to Rotu. I love seeing that as a finisher. And that's actually something really interesting because that was a Majestic played. That was a Majestic played. And that is a bit of a difference, difference in the dromai Reinar matchup in Clash. You're allowed to play Majestics uh, only if they're your mentor, your weapon, or your hero specialization. So Reinar gets to run Majestics, and I guess Super Rares as well, uh, in his specialization slots, whereas Dromai's specialization is only a rare. So uh, the power levels aren't quite the same in terms of getting to run those specializations, so that's pretty cool to see, like Clash favoring the hero that actually can abuse those slots. Very, very interesting. <laughs> And hey, if you want to see more of me, of course, I have the Mansant YouTube channel and I do most of the streaming now for LSS. So any of these big events, you will probably see me involved in some capacity. Have a good one and see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.